that fresh start that they needed after what happened to them in 
mostly in the front yard and uh, they had overall a good time they invited some family that they had in the area plus them plus Sandy it was just a big family gathering and uh, by the time that the party was over Richard uh, got outside his uh, house and he saw a bottle I don't know if this was a beer bottle and uh, it was broken, it was glass and it was broken and apparently it was either in his driveway or his part or side of the sidewalk, not that the sidewalk is yours but you know it was somewhat close to his house. So he decided to call the police because he found that broken bottle in the sidewalk that he knew was from the neighbors that they were having a party and Apparently, they didn't care, so they threw garbage to his house. The police, they just couldn't believe that they had to go take a report on a broken beer bottle, but they did. He said Mike uh, did it on purpose. Richard said that Mike did it on purpose, that he was not a clean guy, quote-unquote clean guy, and that he couldn't believe that he felt the need to go and throw this uh, by his house. Now, just so you have an idea, Richard never liked that house. It was in the way. Because if that house wasn't there, you would have ocean view. Not that there's anything he could do about it other than buy the property and tear it down so he could stare at the ocean. But, uh, you know, it also bothered him that he this was the most, uh, quote-unquote, modest, modest house of the neighborhood. Not the kind of house that fitted the neighborhood, so... And on top of that, it was blocking the ocean view, so it was kind of a, you know, a hassle for him to see that house. He, he, he just didn't like it. He never did. Now, the beer bottle was kind of the beginning of the end. He continued to report bottles being in his front lawn. Uh, he would even bag them as evidence and call the police to take it. And they did take it a few times. But when they went to talk to Michael, Michael across the street, he denied having to do anything with it. Now one, one day, Mikey decided to call his neighbors across the street. Richard's uh, kids and uh, Anita, the mom, picked up the phone and asked and, well, Mikey asked Anita if, she, if he could go play with the boys and Mike, uh, oh goodness gracious, Anita asked Mikey to put his mom on the phone. She told Florence that her husband was very upset because of the bottles issue. Um, Florence was confused, but Anita told her that um, she didn't want the kids to play with Mikey anymore. And um, she hung up the phone. Florence had to explain to Mikey that they just couldn't play together anymore, that Anita didn't want to. But just the idea or the thought that Richard was blaming them for those broken bottles or garbage in his front lawn. It was a surprise for them. Now, Florence, Mike, and Mikey, their last name is Phillips, so if I refer to them as the Phillips, you know who I'm talking about. The Phillips would spend their weekends outdoors. I mean, they just moved in, so they were gardening, they were cleaning the yard. Richard would go outside and, you know, kind of stare at what they were doing. It was kind of awkward, but uh, they didn't mind at first. They would have family come over and they would all get in, like this bunch of people together to help them clean the yard and do different projects. One day, Richard decided to, from his house, yell at the Phillipses, and uh, he would say something like, you don't belong here, you need to go back to the 
city. The Phillips would not want to mess with the guy, so they would go inside and avoid him. Almost like he wanted to bully them for them to move. It was also said in one of the articles that I read that in this area back then, people moved there for, you know, the beauty of the area and, uh, and stuff like that, but also that it was really hard to fit in with the people that were already from the area. Now, Mike decided that he wanted to put some kind of a camera to record from his front window into the neighbor's house to kind of catch him doing something so they could report it to the police. I mean, they needed evidence that something was going on. They needed to catch him in the act in order to get some kind of evidence for the police to pay attention to what they were saying. At this point, uh, the Phillips, I mean, they, they, they just been reporting all kinds of weird activity to the police. I mean, I it was there was one episode when he was um, shooting his gun in the yard and apparently he wasn't being very safe about it, so they called the police. But by the time that the police got there, Richard went inside. And, you know, the police was kind of getting tired of all this, of Richard calling and then Michael calling and, you know, this kind of, pro it was being a problem. So, Michael put that camera in the window that kind of points to Richard's house. Not only that, but he also decided to get a gun. They were against it, but then they decided to buy a gun to, quote unquote, play with it in the front yard. This seemed to be some kind of a tactic, intimidation tactic that Michael was trying to use and he would teach Mikey uh, in the yard so the neighbor could see. Michael thought that by him getting a gun uh, that Richard would do something illegal like threaten him with his gun or something and he would get it in camera to report it to the police. Things were getting worse by the minute. Now one night, Richard heard a window break. He called the police and he pointed to the neighbor's house, but he had no evidence. And Michael was not about to tell him that he had a camera or anything like that. So Richard that night decided to uh, put a restraining order against the family across the street, the Phillips. And he thought that they were a threat to him, to himself and his family. Now Richard decided one day to get his boys and make them march military style with guns in his front yard. Now there are reports of people all around the neighborhood that said that it was crazy to see a 10 and a 12 year old kid marching like military style in their front yard while their father was kind of teaching them how to do it. The neighbors reported as weird, scary, and a, a little bit crazy. They felt like Richard was bra brainwashing the kids and even you know, his own wife. Now, now, Richard was not the only scary one the kids were too. Mikey couldn't play outside anymore. His parents, Florence and Mike, decided that this was too much and that they didn't want to experience, experience what happened in Indiana all over again. Michael finally filed a harassment, uh, I don't know if a claim, I, I don't know what that was, but he was waiting for a court date. In the meantime, he decided to continue to film with his camera pretty much anything that he could get. He would have it there 24-7 and uh, trying to get the neighbors, you know, to do 
something crazy on camera to have it as evidence for the court date. Now, one of the incidents that really didn't help this case was when Mikey decided to go to the river. I mean, uh, Mikey was running, uh, not running, but he was walking towards the river when he realized that Richard and his boys were right behind him. They had guns, so he got scared. <laughs> he started running towards his home and yelling, you know, calling his mother. The mom at that point heard the yelling. She called the police and they filed a protection order or a restriction order. But to kind of cool things down, they decided to go to Indiana to visit, you know, their older daughter and try to get some distance from the guy. And hopefully things will calm down by the time they came back. You could see that the families were upset with each other. I mean, yes, Richard was a little bit out there, but uh, the Florence and Mike, when they went to visit their daughter, they took the tapes and they were going through all the footage that they had. <laughs> Again, almost like they were obsessed with each other. <laughs> they were scared. It was disturbing to live by a guy like that. But they explained to their daughter that financially they just couldn't move. They just couldn't do anything to move out of that neighborhood. Florence uh, asked her daughter that if anything happened to them because of their neighbor, that she would take care of Mike and Mikey and raise him. They feared for their lives, but they had no other option. They had to stand their ground. They had to go back home the next day and uh, make Richard understand that they were going to stay there. They were not moving. When they got back home, they saw somebody running from their house to the neighbors. They smelled kerosene in the porch area. And later, they discovered that apparently somebody uh, was putting kerosene in their f the porch to set it on fire. Now, sadly, the camera that they had, it had one angle was one camera and it wasn't pointing directly to their porch to kind of catch whoever did it but um, they still needed proof and they still were waiting for the court date to settle this with Richard Michael and Mikey continued to target practice in the front yard almost like an intimidating practice and things were escalating. It was not only Richard now, but they were fighting back. The problem is, in my humble opinion, you don't know who you're fighting back. On August 29th, Florence's niece, the one that lived in the area, they, she went to visit her aunt Florence and told her that they were expecting a baby. They were so happy for them. They decided to have dinner together. <laughs> and, uh, while they were having this party, shots were being fired. It was like target practice again across the street. I mean, they had the camera, and even though it was only one angle, they still were catching Richard doing all these things in his front yard. This was getting worse. But, uh, having said that, you'd think that they would stay inside and no. That night, uh, Michael and Florence decided to go out for a walk. This is something that they usually did every night or every evening after dinner. Usually, Mikey would, would go with them, but that night, uh, Florence told 
Mikey to stay behind, that things were not the best and they, they'd rather have him stay with her niece and nephew. All of a sudden, shots were fired. The niece and nephew went to the back room because by the time that they heard the shots, uh, when they look outside the window, His name is Colby. He saw that Richard shot Florence and Mike, Michael. I mean, when they saw that, they were afraid that, they, that Richard was going to go inside the house and shoot them too, so they decided to go to the back room. Apparently he was very distraught. Uh, the officer that went inside knew Richard, so he was like, Hey, it's me, Richard, put the gun down. It did take a few minutes to convince him to drop it. Florence and Mike were still missing at this point, and later on they were found uh, in some bushes. a big crime scene. The damage was done and Richard was arrested for their murder. The sad part, I mean, there's many, many parts, sad parts in this story, but uh, I feel like even the killer and his family, I mean, he made both of the boys participate in the shooting. Twenty-five shots fired and they were only listening to their dad they were victims too according to the police it took the police three days to go with the bomb squad through Richard's house he had guns explosives I mean three days for the bomb squad to go through his entire house it was clear that he was mentally unstable. He even dug tunnels, I mean, creating
shooting was caught on camera. It is clear that Richard and the boys did it. It showed exactly how they were killed. It showed Richard with the gun getting in and out of frame. It was more than enough evidence to convict him. Richard got 50 years for the death of Michael, and he got life sentence for Florence. At some point, Michael or somebody representing Mikey sued for wrongful death, and he got over $500,000. He was awarded that much money, but he never received it. Sandy raised Michael in Indiana, as her mom asked her to. But this was the end of the new beginning. I mean, how sad is that they were trying to get away from violence, they were trying to stay away from you know, the, the, the thought of somebody dying in their front yard or the, you know, the front of their house. And they ended up moving to a neighborhood where they died just in front of their house while they were taking a walk. And not by a gang member, but, a, but by a Navy veteran. What are the odds? Maybe one in billions, trillions. Yet, this was the beginning of the end when they moved out. If there's anything that we can get out of this case is uh, that I covered some. And I'll, I'll have a few in the description box down below. But I think if there's anything that we can get from this kind of case is... The fact that we do not know the mental state of people that live around us. Um, the fact that they had to buy a gun to kind of uh, intimidate uh, Richard. I think it was the wrong move. Not that I'm judging, but, you know, just so <laughs> I can make the argument. Let's, let's, let's say that. He, they were trying to intimidate a guy who already felt intimidating by, intimidated by them. You're trying to intimidate a guy who is very familiar with guns and you're playing with fire. You're trying to intimidate a guy that you have no idea his mental state. You don't know that. You don't know how stable he is. So, I think that people tend to assume that we are all perfectly healthy and that we're all, you know, that we all think the same things and that we all get intimidated the same way and that we all share this common fear. Let me tell you, people fear different things and get intimidated by different things and sometimes you don't even need a gun for that. Am I saying that this is the excuse that Richard needed in order to attack them? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe this is the exact thing that he needed in order to attack them. I am sure that Richard had more than one encounter with different neighbors, but... Maybe he didn't feel as strongly as he felt about the Phillips. So whatever you do, whatever you decide, if you're going through a neighborly, well not neighborly, but you know, neighborhood feud, always think about the worst case scenario. And that's coming from somebody who is always living in a butterflies, rainbows, and unicorns kind of state of mind. Because I like to believe the best in people. I like to see the best qualities in people. But uh, in this case, you can only assume the worst. Just because.
just you share a neighborhood doesn't mean your guys are you guys are friends or that you should be friends. Maybe keeping a safe distance if you feel like somebody has a different way of living. Maybe keep your distance if you understand that, you know, let time goes by go by and hope that that will do something, but uh, never, never, never assume that that person that you're having the problem with has the same <coughs> mental state like yours. I'm not saying that you're perfectly okay. I'm just saying that there's a lot of sick people out there that they are dealing with it. They're taking medicine, but you don't know if your intimidating behavior can trigger something for them. Such as that case, really, the beginning of the end. It's uh, senseless. But at the same time, we have a lot of people dealing with issues. We have a lot of veterans dealing with issues. And back then, even more. So such a sad ending. I hope that those boys turn out okay. I hope that they recovered from, you know, their dad's abuse. Because I'm sorry, but that's abuse. Making your kids shoot somebody, well, that's even abuse to other extreme. I completely understand, I mean, the take on the family that just couldn't move out of there because of that. But uh, I think that walking around carrying a gun and kind of showing it off to the neighbor that you didn't know but is mentally unstable it's just it's just a way of intimidation that nobody is going to take the same way that you would let me know what you think about this very sad case again 